Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm taking a first impressions look at Submerged, a third-person, combat-free exploration game, which uh, kind of makes it sound like it maybe leans into the territory of the fairly popular walking simulator, as I guess it's become kind of known, where you just kind of wander around and nothing really happens. You know, sometimes it'll throw some voiceover at you, but this one seems a bit more active, you know, some actual climbing and boating and whatnot. So we're going to start a new game here from a previous recording to make sure this worked. Alright, so here we are in this flooded, kind of modern-looking city. We are this young lady whose presumably younger brother is uh, sick and or injured. I guess this is sort of how we get the uh, story of what's going on here. A village on top of some sort of wooden platform or something up in the ocean. Uh, a family, parents, kids. Mm. Getting a little bit of a Shadow of the Colossus vibe. Just the kind of idea that we've got, I guess, this sort of hub building with the uh, injured little brother. Of course, he's not actually dead, so uh, he's got a one-up from Mysterious Lady. Alright, so we got our story. It looks like we've got maybe explanation of how the city ended up like this. Uh, some creatures, I guess we'll see those. And landmarks. So again, this is, uh, from what I understand, this is a fairly open, just sort of... Speaking of creatures, sweet whale. It's sort of just an open, explore the city, find uh, important things. I think we have to find like medical supplies or something like that. Also, this is an Unreal Engine 4 game. Uh, I've mentioned before that I've got kind of a, uh, a dislike for the general look of a lot of lower... Well, I guess like, yeah, lower budget, but also a smaller team kind of Unreal Engine 3 games. I find they generally don't look very good, and I think this definitely kind of improves over that. Uh, the buildings still look a little disconnected, I guess, from the, the ocean. Like, the ocean kind of looks a bit more cartoony or something. But uh, overall, I think this looks pretty good so far.
All right, so there's a. Uh, I guess we need to go up there and find some bandages or something. Maybe use that uh, sheet there. Also, I don't know if you saw it there, but it looked like there was a dude standing up on that building. All right, so we got this boat, which, holy shit, this thing can take corners. <laughs> I mean, I guess we do have the uh, the long outward motor there. This also seems to have a interesting sort of post-apocalyptic visual aesthetic going on that a lot of post-apocalyptic games don't really use. Because a lot of those games go with, uh, you know, the sort of brown, wastelandy kind of look. A sort of Mad Max-inspired wasteland. But uh, less of them go with the kind of overgrown, but otherwise kind of still intact uh, civilization look. You know, the sort of nature is reclaiming what was once lost. And also, the, uh, like, take a look at this boat here. It's got sort of tribal carving on it, but clearly it's also got a motor, so it's sort of a, you know, post-apocalyptic tribal society, but still kind of maintaining the, uh, some of the technology. And that's the sort of thing that also doesn't get done a lot. That's like, uh, oh jeez, what was that? Journey to the West? Based game? What was that? Enslaved? Had that aesthetic? Even though you don't really see a lot of other people. And also the upcoming game uh, Horizon Zero Dawn also has that kind of tribal people but using fancy technology bows to hunt robot dinosaur animals for their scrap. Sort of like, I guess that would be more of a, a post-post-apocalypse kind of thing. You know, people have sort of recovered and banded together into small groups. Alright, so it's a very simplistic kind of platforming going on here. It doesn't look like we really... Like, I can't, you know, jump other than where there's a point to jump to. It looks like we've got these sort of red flowers doing a mirror's edge kind of thing of, hey, you can climb here. As someone who's kind of into urbex, I really like the idea of just exploring this big-ass, abandoned, you know, flooded modern city. Because there aren't really a lot of examples of that. Obviously, Pripyat is kind of the closest thing to a modern ghost town. Or Battleship Island, but you can't really go there. Alright, what's this? Collectible, I'm guessing? Alright. Uh, swirly. I guess that would be we have a city story. So what? There was a there was a storm, a hurricane, maybe a portal. Who knows? Well, I really hope uh, they're serious about that no combat thing because, geez, does she move extremely slowly? I wouldn't have to try and run away from something with this girl. But yeah, this seems very, uh, you know, just kind of chill. You just climb around. I mean, yeah, we've got an injured little brother who probably needs some immediate antibiotics, but aside from that, there's not really a lot of pressure here. I just, uh, there's a cloth there. We just use one of these. Or is that, is that supposed to be a banner, or is that like a parachute or something. I mean, we've got the icon of, like, a crate up there, so I'm wondering if this is actually, like, a, you know, supply drop or something we're trying to get here. Oh, maybe it is. We didn't even have to fight off Rises' men to get this one. Alright, well that should probably keep him from death for a while.
right, so I guess these little story segments are kind of gated by us finding stuff in the city. And then she comes back here, takes a nap, and we see more of the story. So I'm guessing that's Dad, and Dad was a fisherman. I feel like her uh, her fancy little scarf thing there is probably not very durable considering all the holes in it. Like it kind of looks tattered from a distance, but up close you can see it's actually supposed to be like that. All right, so let's head out into the world. Okay, now we got a spyglass. So I guess this is how we find kind of points of interest in the city. Just kind of looking around. Alright, so that's probably maybe our main story goals, is to find these, uh, supply crates. I don't know if we need more medical supplies or, you know, food or something, because it did say emergency rations on it. Though I have a feeling that might be just kind of a generic box. Alright, well that seems like all we can see from here. Maybe if we get a, uh, a vantage point we can look out over the city and find some more stuff. Do we have a map? Okay, we do have a map. Uh, looks like... Not super huge, but, you know, fairly good size. I've heard this game is fairly short, which, you know, these kind of games usually are, otherwise they become kind of tedious. There's that whale again. Alright. So I guess we just have to examine a creature to get the little note on it. Whale's looking kind of bumpy. Wonder if I can just track it. And maybe a little bioluminescent? I think they're like glowing blue pustules. Oh, that's a good way to get your tiny boat destroyed. Alright, so is this like a, a post-apocalyptic mutation? Water pollution has caused the whales to grow glowing tumors. I kind of wonder, like, if there actually was a flooded city like this, do you think whales would actually swim between the streets? I feel like they'd be a little too, you know, close together and dangerous for a big whale. Like, yeah, like a humpback, or not a humpback, sorry. Like killer whales or something like that, or dolphins or whatever. Obviously those would make sense here because they'd fit, but do you think a big, like, fucking humpback or gray whale or something would swim between these streets? Oh, that looks like a landmark. that sound. Okay, so it seems like there is a bit of a limited range on these, because I probably should have seen that back there. So I guess I can't just get a really high point and look around, I'll have to actually get close to stuff. something in the water there. Okay, so now we've got a boost. There's definitely something going... Oh, is that a dolphin? Oh, look. They've also got the, the weird green and blue tumors. Yeah, they're following my boat, aren't they? That's 
pretty neat. I can't think of another game where you have a boat that does this. I don't think Wind Waker had dolphins. So what are these uh, secrets? Okay, those are probably those journals or whatever. I hope these dolphins are smart enough not to swim in my propeller. Yeah, this seems, you know, kind of relaxing the same way that sailing in Wind Waker was, where you're just kind of going around looking for stuff. Except here, you don't have to worry about bombs or, you know, giant sea monsters. Alright, we should probably find another one of those crates. Just wondering if we can find other ones or if we have to do them in a specific order because like it showed us where the next one is so i'm just wondering if that's like the main objective and then we have free reign to go around and find the other stuff I guess we can probably only explore the stuff that there's some way to climb up on. Like we gotta find some sort of ledge or something that we can actually get off the boat. Because I don't think we are able to climb all of these buildings. Is that another boat upgrade? murky muck stuff looks a lot like the skin of the whales and stuff so I wonder if this is actually some sort of you know pollution or virus or something in the water oh slammed into that whale probably would have died there or at least capsized now let's head towards this uh, box over here We totally missed that first boat that I spotted with the spyglass. That was like right next to our starting point, but I'll just get that later. Where am I on the map? Oh, okay, there I am. What? Dolphin just like shoved me into the wall. Is that just increasing our boost, it seems like? I wonder if you get other boat upgrades. fairly tall structure that we have to climb. So, aside from the climbing, which is pretty basic, this seems, you know, pretty much just a wandering exploration sailing kind of simulator. Oh. Is that another man thing?
It doesn't really seem like there's a lot of branching paths when we're climbing these buildings even. I mean, there might be to find like journals and stuff, but otherwise, I guess there's probably not a lot to this. That's so really depends if you're the kind of person who just wants a kind of mellow exploration experience. But if so, you're probably the kind of person who also enjoys the you know, aforementioned walking simulator type games. I do like that there's at least some interaction here. Like, it's not just like, oh, you're wandering around until you hit the vocal trigger point. Even if it's very basic. I think I still use Dear Esther as kind of a comparison point for, you know, what makes a very ambient kind of game versus like a game where you walk around to trigger stuff, because that's all you did in Dear Esther. You didn't open doors or, you know, even try to find your way. You just walked around until you hit a trigger point where a voice clip would play. If I remember correctly, there was not actually specific voice clips connected to specific areas. You just got a random one and had to piece it together. But I could be wrong. It's been a while. get up there. Really? How are you climbing that, child? It's kind of funny how games like this, where you're doing a lot of climbing stuff, often have a main character who seems like they shouldn't have the, you know, upper body strength to do this. Like, this girl, she's pretty slim. Wow. I don't know what I was trying to say there. I said, like, slim and lean at the same time. She's pretty slim, yo. But yeah, she is, she's pretty small. Like, she probably doesn't have a lot of, you know, upper body strength. So, uh, I don't know if she'd have the stamina to climb these sort of things. And, like, Sh Shadow of the Colossus also. Of course, there, he, uh, the main character is quickly boosted by stealing the souls of, you know, the Colossi. But, still sort of young kids doing ridiculous gymnastic feats. Oh, there's a... Uh, thing down there. I just sort of hop the ledge? Of course not. But I bet there's a side path here. Yeah, it looks like we can shimmy here. That's probably as much of a, a diversion from the main path you're going to get climbing these buildings. So the city flooded and then became green because the trees or bushes and stuff grew. I know it's a little nitpicky too, but this palm tree type thing appears to be growing straight out of the concrete with no soil whatsoever. Alright, we need to go up more. This pipe here. I guess to counterbalance that lack of upper body strength argument, this girl probably also doesn't weigh very much. So, you know, less of a struggle against gravity. lighter out of this one. Alright, that's definitely a humanoid mutiny figure. Maybe somebody who stayed in the city after it flooded. Instead of, you know, living on a platform like this girl apparently does. That's kind of neat, I guess, if uh, each of the things we gather kind of changes our hub here. Alright, so Mom was also a fisherman. But then there was a storm, and Mom drowned, apparently. It's a little grim.
grandfather was never the same after the storm. Taku to Pesta. Get what you know. Some nights he'd just sit there staring out the sea, waiting for her to come back. But she never would. Alright, so... Got another goal here. I'm guessing even if you can find different crates, the contents of the crate will be always the same for that, you know, order. Like, no matter which crate we found, it would have been a lighter that time. But if we found a different one first, and then we went to that one, that one would be something else. Like water or whatever. But uh, that seems to be... You know, the base gameplay loop of uh, Submerged here. We're just sort of exploring around, finding these crates, and I'm guessing the game probably ends after we find all of them. It looked like there was maybe ten of them. I mean, not really maybe, I just wasn't really paying attention to how many dots were up at the top there. But this seems neat, you know? It's a, it's a very aesthetic-driven game, I can tell that. But I enjoy a kind of relaxing romp like this once in a while. A nice break from uh, being murdered for all of your dinosaur parts. Or what have you. And it's just very chill. Bop that dolphin. This is available on Steam. Uh, it is rather pricey for what it is, though. Uh, I've heard it's like maybe two or three hours. Depending on, obviously, how much of these diaries and stuff you try to explore and find. But uh, it is $20 on Steam. So you definitely have to kind of enjoy these things for it to be worth your money, I think. Otherwise, you know, obviously wait for it to be on sale. It probably will be at some point. And, uh, yeah. This seems, uh, seems alright. I like the way it looks. I like the kind of, you know, indirect story stuff it's given you. And I like the boat. I like having a boat. Not enough games have boats. All games should have boats. I hope Just Cause 3 has more boats. Anyway, you folks all take care. I'll see you again next time. That way I'll look like it was stuck against a building. Oh. Flying fish. Alright, now I'm just getting distracted by all the wildlife. See you around, folks.